All right, Teague, uh, it is the end of December 2014, and uh, it's been a rough month for you. Uh, you lost your brother Ty at the beginning of the month. And uh, man, I tell you what, some of the video tributes I saw, getting, getting chills thinking about it, but uh, yeah. you know, losing Ty, Ty's the guy you looked up to, four-time state champ, yeah. Pennsylvania, one of the all-time greats, but you know, what, what did Ty mean to you, and, and how did the wrestling community really step up for you? Uh, it, it has been a, a really tough month, and you know, I believe this, the people that you surround yourself with, uh, they're either gonna bring you up or they're gonna pull you down. And the wrestling community for me uh, during this time has been unbelievably supportive, not just from me, but my family in general. Um, you know, a lot of the memories of my brother um, were, they're directly tied to the sport of wrestling. So whether it was people that he coached, people he wrestled against, uh, families that from the time we were five years old, we were traveling across the state and across the country to tournaments with. Um, I've heard from all of them. Uh, they've been extremely supportive. Um, you know, what can you say? It's, it's, uh, it's a situation that you never want to have to go through. Um, but that's, that's living, that's life, that's part of the process. And, uh, you know, I wish he was, I wish he was still here. Um, but at the same time, you know, the, the biggest message, uh, like I shared with my team, um, someone that had his success, the same drive that he had in the sport of wrestling, unfortunately, he also allowed to control him after wrestling. You know, he didn't find a place to put that energy. And as I said in some some interviews and, and some things, you know, alcoholism is, is ultimately what took my brother's life. And um, I hope that there are wrestlers out there that read about him and learn about him and can understand that maybe if they have a similar issue, they have a similar problem, that they've got to recognize it early and they've got to find a way to deal with it early on. And um, it's unfortunate now for my brother Ty that, you know, the, 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 the abuse that he put his body through because of it ended up taking his life. But the positive that we could come out with it is if there's a young kid, if there's a young wrestler or a young athlete, a young person that could learn something from his death and learn that somebody as successful as him um, could get taken over by something like that and allow it to literally take his life. If they can learn from that and get help from it early on and fix that in their own life, then maybe his death is not in vain. And um, for me right now, I'm just, you know, every day I'm still searching for, uh, for answers. And um, I, know, I know now he's at peace uh, and that's comforting. He was like your biggest supporter, you know, like, have you figured out yet how he, he got past the guards at Cleveland State in 1998? Have you figured that uh, one out yet? Did, did, did anyone give you the story behind that or did you ever ask him? No, I never asked him, but those that know my brother, um, he just had a way of how he did everything. And, you know, Jake Herbert was, was telling a funny story, uh, and it was specifically of the Olympics. Um, when Ty made his way down into the, the official seating area for Fila, you know, there, nobody's supposed to be down in there. And there's my brother, you know, a few rows away from where Coleman's wrestling for his bronze medal match. And, and Jake, Jake described it really well. He was just like, your brother just always had the presence like he was supposed to be there. So he, he would say to other people, and we, we did this many times either at concerts or different places we would go. There was somewhere Ty would want to go and you weren't allowed to go because you didn't have the credentials or the passes or the whatever. And Ty would just say, well, you just need to act like you're supposed to be there. And sure enough, he would just walk right by people that would, they didn't even know what to do. They would be flustered because he would walk by and before you know it, he was already in the seating area and they would never even bother with him. So uh, there's just a lot of great stories like that that are coming out uh, about my brother that people are telling about my brother. And um, those those are really good memories that I'm going to remember because I remember going to those places with him and just the way that he, he could make people feel comfortable. He could meet a person for the first time and 30 minutes later, it was as if they knew each other their whole lifetime. Um, 
and that's that's really special. I don't think there's a lot of souls that are out there that are like that. Um, and looking back on his life, I, I've got a, a lifetime of memories, um, things that I wake up every day and I think about that I haven't thought about since we were seven and, and 12 years old. Um, and those are good memories that I'm gonna cherish forever. How about when you watch him wrestle, man? He was a freak of yeah. nature. Yeah, he was different. Isn't that fun to watch? He was different. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, during this whole process, I'm, I'm seeing videos that I haven't looked at since Ty finished wrestling in 1990. And um, as a little kid, I remember watching and like, I wanted to be able to do all of those things, but the reality was completely different body type. My style of wrestling was completely different. Um, so when I did watch him, you know, seeing those videos and having those memories of, I wanted to learn how to do those things he could do, but he was just different. I mean, he was he was really different when he competed. I tell a lot of people, he's, he's one of the meanest competitors I've ever seen compete. I mean, he was brutal. When he wrestled, he wanted to hurt them and he wanted to pin them. Um, but also very gracious. Once he would pin them, he helped the guy up. He helped him for a fourth right? Yeah. But prior to that, he was putting the screws to him. And um, for me, on my career, and I think anybody that ever wrestled under Ty, he coached in the same manner that he competed. Like there was no going through it at half speed. You did it as hard as you could, full speed as you could. And um, you know. My career wouldn't be what it is without him. So many of the kids that wrestled under him through Angry Fish, through the youth club, uh, they say the same thing. Like, Ty, he literally transformed the way that I competed, the way that I wrestled. When he was in my corner, I felt like I couldn't lose. And uh, for me, it's extremely um, fulfilling to know that he touched so many lives, not just from his wrestling, the people he competed against, but the way that he coached was unique and it was different and it helped rise the level of those that were underneath of him. So he was, he was special. He was special. Any unique stories you can share? I know that there's all the ones out there from, you know, the Angry Fish when he was coaching, right. obviously North Allegheny when he was wrestling. I think yeah. there's some North Carolina ones maybe too. Yeah, absolutely. But is, are there any that you can think of that, you know, you haven't heard or seen people write or share? Um, you know, Ryan Uwakim, who Ty wrestled in, in the state finals his senior year for his fourth title and ended up pinning. You know, he and Ty ended up becoming friends later on because they were both coaching youth. And Ryan always said, you know, whenever I saw your brother, it was it was the type of friendship, even though we had been competitors, and that was probably hit Ryan's biggest match and, and lost to Ty. He said, I never felt like we were competitors after that. We were just really, really good friends. Um, one of the stories I told at, uh, at my brother's eulogy, um, I, was, I was really young. I was maybe eight years old, nine years old. Uh, Jim Harshaw, who now works at University of Virginia, is in their fundraising department. Um, Ty was taking us to a workout at North Allegheny High School. Ty was in high school and, and we were munchkins. So he was gonna work out with his high school partners. Jimmy and I were supposed to work out on our own, right? Well, I, on planning to go to practice, I didn't put any workout clothes in my bag. I wanted to get to practice, and then Jimmy and I, I figured if I don't have workout clothes, we can go like play soccer or whatever while Ty works out with the high school guys, right? So we get there, and sure enough, everyone's getting changed, and I didn't have anything in my bag. And Ty was like, what do you mean you don't have anything in your bag? We're coming for a wrestling workout. And I was like, I, I don't know, I just, I forgot, I forgot my clothes. <laughs> Right? So he proceed, He tells Jimmy Harshaw, Jimmy, Tigger's going to work out in his underwear today. <laughs> and Jimmy was like, all right, you had to do what he had to do, right? So my brother skips his workout and puts Jimmy and I through a 90-minute grinding workout. I'm crying the whole time, you know. How old are you? I'm li I was, 10? I don't even think I was that old. I was either 8 or 9 years old. So I'm in my underwear, right? Going hard with, with Jimmy for 90 minutes. I mean, we're beating the snot out of each other and ties on me the whole time, you know? Um, and then afterwards, you know, he skipped his workout to make sure that we, I got my workout. In your underwear? In my underwear. And afterwards, he sat me down, he said, look, you know, mom and dad made a huge sacrifice for us to be where we are at North Allegheny. And he said, you know, it, it, it's not fair to them for you to have the opportunity like this 
and think that you can skip out on a workout. It's just, it's, you're not just skipping out on a workout, you're literally not fulfilling the opportunities that they're giving us, you know? So for me, that was like, that was a huge life lesson for me. Um, and it, to this day, when I see Jimmy, we still talk about the workout that we had to go through for 90 minutes with me in my underwear and, and him and his, I, I didn't even have shoes on. I was barefoot, no, no socks, no wrestling Jim's a lot bigger than you. He's probably bigger than you then, too. Well, right? Yeah, back then, Jimmy was always about 10 pounds bigger than me, but he was my workout partner, you know? And a true friend, uh, he didn't even blink an eye at it. We went hard for the 90 minutes with me in my underwear. So that's a good one that I'll always cherish and I'll always remember. Well, hey, man, thanks for sharing. Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow at the competition, all right? Thanks, man.